Mr. President, Madam Deputy High Commissioner, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. As you all know, a place in my country on the 8th of January this year at the presidential election when the people voted decisively for change. From a culture of impunity where the rights of the individual had been violated for almost a decade, the people sought a change to a new Sri Lanka where ethnic, cultural, linguistic diversity is respected, celebrated and valued. And independent democratic institutions, freedom of expression, the rule of law, good governance and the promotion and protection of all human rights, both civil and political, as well as economic, social and cultural rights are upheld. The President and Prime Minister placed reconciliation as well as development as the topmost priorities of the government. Efforts were launched immediately to restore and renew Sri Lanka's relations with the international community as a whole to ensure that the benefits of these partnerships and relationships accrue to the people of my country. Soon after the parliamentary election on 17th August, the President and the Prime Minister worked to forge a national unity government that is essential for the political and policy stability required for reconciliation to succeed. Mr. President, the spirit of the government that I represent is to build a nation that is prosperous, a nation where the human rights of all individual citizens are protected, a nation which is a responsible member of the international community, a nation that is confident, respecting the universal values of freedom, equality and justice, and a nation that is at peace with itself and with the world. This new vision is what we now represent in our actions in this Council. You heard clearly the message that the Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed when he addressed the Council on 14th September regarding the steps that Sri Lanka has already taken and intends to take in achieving reconciliation and upholding human rights, including the setting up of mechanisms for truth-seeking, justice, reparations and non-recurrence through consultations with all stakeholders. You have also seen our written response dated 15th September to the OHCHR on the report of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the report of the OHCHR investigation on Sri Lanka, which sets out clearly the path we intend to take. We stated that we take note of the report of the OISL and that we will ensure that its contents as well as recommendations receive due attention of the relevant authorities, including the new mechanisms that are envisaged to be set up. Mr. President, in this path that we have chosen to tread, we will work with the High Commissioner, his office, systems and procedures of the Human Rights Council and the international community, including our bilateral partners, to take necessary steps to safeguard and uphold the human rights of all our citizens. This includes obtaining their advice and assistance. As you are aware, Sri Lanka worked with the main co-sponsor of the resolution and other members of the Council to achieve consensus. We look forward to your continued support. I thank you. Thank you. And um, with this, I will now begin our discussion.